Many of you Cyberpunk fans will be aware by now that there's something called the Magenta Mystery or the FF06B5 Mystery within the game. This relates to a hex decimal code outside a statue of Arasaka Tower, and there are other statues linked to this mystery, but no one's actually found out what it means yet. People have been data mining and finding things in the game that could be linked to this mystery, and people have been literally clutching at straws for months, and that is until patch 2.0 released just a few days ago. Information on the mystery has been found, but at what cost? You see, a lot of the information from this mystery has come from data miners of the FF06B5 community, and they've specifically asked me to keep some details secret until the time's right. But the biggest reason is because CD Projekt Red themselves have said that this information wasn't supposed to be found yet, even though it was in the game files, and they're not overly happy with how it was obtained. So without further ado, let's get into the details of the newly found information on FF06B5 that has been obtained legitimately, and I'll talk a little bit about the stuff that's been found illegitimately without any spoilers. My name is Mike, this is Deconstructing the Game, let's get to it. Now, for those of you who don't know what the FF06B5 mystery is, also known as the Magenta mystery, then I'll give you a quick rundown of what it is and what's actually been found about the mystery so far. Basically, people found a statue outside Arasaka Tower with a hexadecimal code on that says FF06B5. Now, that code is the hexadecimal color for magenta, so people naturally assumed that the magenta statues outside Jig Jig Street had something to do with this mystery as well, although nothing on that front has been found to clarify that this is actually a thing or just speculation. To be fair, this could just be a nod to Shadowrun and the Mega Drive, but who knows. That is until CD Projekt Red released The Witcher 3 next gen version and within that game people found a secret area that had a symbol on the wall with the Grigoric alphabet on it and a symbol that looked very similar to a symbol linked to the FF06B5 statue. Once again this discovery actually sparked a lot of speculation and people were trying to decipher what it actually meant but so far there's been no joy. When patch 2.0 released for Cyberpunk, Ryan went to the church outside the Biotechnica Flats, which is a location we've been to before trying to discover secrets about the game. Before we found a box inside the shed, I'm thinking it was for the Iguana mission at the very start of the game where you first meet Jackie. But since then, the church has been renovated and there's a massive server room in here with a laptop and retro video game called Arasaka Tower 3D. If you look at the laptop, you'll see messages relating to the Magenta Mystery, Monks, and things like that. And it talks about playing a video game and finding a key in a door that you thought was a wall. This particular video game has sparked a lot of interest with the FF06B5 community, and people have been hard at work playing the game, finding out many, many secrets about it. The arcade video game is styled like an old Doom game and you play as Johnny Silverhand trying to escape Arasaka Tower when he planted the bomb in 2023. Now I have to admit, this video game can be quite difficult and you have to rely on your memory to remember where the enemies are, where health packs are and where some of the hidden doors are. Now it's the hidden doors which is the most interesting thing because in the game you can find rooms that are coloured magenta with codes on the wall and there's even a two dimensional image of the magenta statue in one of them. Now, one would naturally think that this video game is just an extra part of the game, a little mini game, and the aim of the game is to escape Arasaka Tower and get some form of accomplishment. However, if you do escape Arasaka Tower, you will notice that your score is literally FF06B5. People notice this and started playing the game again and again, finding all the rooms, mapping out the areas, and discovering more secrets. Those secrets are literally so hard to find, I'm really amazed that the guys discovered this, and kudos to all you guys for and pulling together and all your hard work has really paid off. Now for obvious reasons I'm not going to spoil this mini game for you, I'm not going to tell you what the secrets are and how to accomplish this game. If you want to do that you can go to many of the other forums or channels and I'm sure you'll find exactly what you're looking for. But essentially there are many secrets in this mini game. there's a maze involved, there's fragmented QR codes and once you finish the mini game, you will see that the server stacks in front of you have coded panels on them. There's eight of them all together 
which require you to enter eight individual codes into them, effectively shutting the servers down. Now, these codes have not been found within the game. They've actually been found by data mining and people are hard at work trying to figure out how to find them in the game and how you know what the codes are for. Because people data mine these codes, CD Projekt Red have asked them not to share this information with anyone until it's found legitimately in the game. Now, the ironic thing about this statement is that CD Projekt Red's mystery literally mirrors that of Ready Player One. The whole concept of the mystery is hidden in an old video game and a group of data miners are looking for it. The keys, doors and all the terminology are the same and the movie pretty much glazes over these facts but the book specifically talks about how the main character takes a break from obsessing over a mystery and he ends up finding the key inside an old video game by the same person who created the mystery and it's pretty much word for word. So I find it really amusing that CD Projekt Red are literally stopping is doing what the whole concept of this thing is. But I'll tell you this, when you shut the servers down you'll be given a new location to find within the map and if you go to that location you can trigger an event to happen. Now this event for me doesn't happen and I haven't been able to trigger this event on my system yet and I'm still trying to work out how to do that. But once this event triggers, you'll be met with a cutscene which shows you more information about the FF06B5 mystery, which links it to The Witcher 3 as well. So at the moment, that's where we're at. There's also a laptop hidden within the trash pile at the location here, which was found by someone on the community as well, which shows you the uh, Ouroboros figure from The Witcher 3, which is a serpent eating its own tail, and it shows you the Grigolic alphabet on the laptop screen as well. So there are many, many secrets in patch 2.0 related to FF06B5, which evidently links to The Witcher as well. If you were to ask me what this means, I'd probably wager that this is kind of a teaser for the new Witcher game that CD Projekt Red are bringing out, possibly related to a teaser trailer, possibly some form of Witcher content, but you also do get a reward after the cutscene at the location you're given on the map as well. So there's a couple of rewards here, but I don't think this is completed yet. And I don't want to spoil the mystery for you, but if you really want to find out what's going on and you want to get stuck in, head over to the FF06B5 community on Reddit or head over to the FF06B5 community on Discord to find out more. What I will say though is if you have found anything by data mining, try not to spoil the game for people who are playing on console or for people who want to play the game legitimately because the developers at CD Projekt Red have literally poured their life and soul into this game and they've tried to create a mystery to basically keep you playing the game, have you have a sense of accomplishment and just enjoy the game for what it is. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I did not have any input into this mystery at all. In fact, I was playing catch up for the majority of it, and I did in fact use the data mined information to get to the next stage, effectively spoiling this mystery for myself. But the business I'm in, I try to dig into things and I want to present things to you guys without spoiling too much. I did of course consult the FF06B5 community and ask them what I could and couldn't put into a video because obviously it wouldn't be fair to them after all their hard work and it wouldn't be fair to you guys to just blurt this information out and spoil the game for you. Obviously it's not fair to CD Projekt Red either because they've poured a lot of their lives and hard work into this game and it wouldn't be fair to spoil it after all that hard work. If you come across anything in patch 2.0 that you think is related to the FF06B5 mystery, head over to Reddit or the FF06B5 Discord page and share your findings with them. A lot of the things you find in Cyberpunk are probably not going to be related to this and a lot of people do in fact clutch at straws or go down many many rabbit holes trying to find something to fit their own personal bias. So look at the information on the servers already that's there, try and patch things together and try and speak to people in order to solve this mystery because at the moment we're still trying to find out how to solve this legitimately within patch 2.0 without data mining the information. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. I know I can't share much information with you, but if you're really interested and you want to go down this rabbit hole, check out the Discord, check out Reddit, and I hope to see you all in the next video. My name's Mike, this has been Deconstructing the Game, and as always, I'll catch you later.